So before we take a look at Ben's serve, be sure after the video to go check out the Slow Motion Tennis Pro. The things that really matter on your swings happen very close to contact. So watching these pros at high speed is so important and the Slow Mo Tennis Pro is one of the best at it. Be sure to check them out. All right, let's take a look at Ben Shelton's beautiful, powerful serve here. Now, it's always important to keep in mind when we look at pros, you know, they might get their body into positions and stuff that we don't as far as how far off the ground they get and whatnot, but pros do things very efficiently. So the fundamentals, you certainly can copy. And there's a couple things I want you to pay special attention to on Ben Shelton, or I want to I wanna take your attention to. Um, we, we can see his great body coil and his great leg drive, how he separates body segments and how he bends his knees. But what's important to remember is you can't translate, you can't translate anything from, you know, the shoulders down or even the coiling of the body segments or the knee bend. You can't translate that into racket head speed unless you have this beautiful arm action. So um, most people mess up the serve in the arm action and they can't connect uh, the body segment. So in other words, watch how this racket completely passes over his head. So this link right here at the elbow fully collapses and this racket really travels all the way back over his head. And then what that allows, it allows the kinetic chain, the body segments to fully stretch out. And if you don't have this arm action, you don't get that stretch out. You won't get a good measure, what we call racket lag. Uh, from high level, great servers, we see how close the racket gets below the bottom. Now again, maybe if you're not swinging as fast as Shelton, you won't get as close to his bottom, but you can explode with your legs and coil your body as much as you want, but you're not gonna connect that ground reaction force to that racket through the shoulder, the elbow, the hips, if you don't let this racket pass all the way over your head. That's really important. I'm gonna show you a drill for that here right after this. I'm gonna show you my favorite drill. One, to improve that arm action. And then I'm also gonna show you a drill that's even uh, less in the progression. That's gonna make you understand how it being absolutely required to have a continental grip if you want to really reach your full serve potential. Um, it's kind of hard to see here, but you'll see uh, Ben has this neutral wrist position. If your body's moving as fast as fast as it wants um, and you're fully extended, you fully have unleashed your kinetic chain, the wrist is going to be what's called a neutral position. It's not going to be bent in or bent back. Um, so you have to learn to use a continental grip in order to fully uncoil into a ball. So I'm gonna show you a couple drills for those things. Um, but again, in these last couple slow-mos here and regular speeds, just pay attention to how that racket passes over his head. And he's definitely on a true continental grip. And that should be your first priority. And then once you've mastered that, yeah, really turn your body. You know, get some knee bend. You do get a little power from pushing, even though that knee bend is also to assist in tilting his body up and to help coil the body segments. But here's, I'm gonna show you a couple drills here real quick, but improve your arm action to get closer to hitting that 149 bomb like Ben. Okay, here's two very powerful drills that I do all the time with people. One is to get you comfortable with the continental grip. And then the second one is to get you comfortable with that full arm motion where you're completely collapsing this elbow link. By the way, before that, make sure if you're enjoying the content, please like the video and please subscribe um, for more. Now, the first one, just to get used to the continental grip, you should know what a continental grip is, by the way, where the bottom knuckle of your pointer finger and your bottom palm pad is kind of on the second bevel from the top. You'll know it if you haven't used it because it's gonna feel awful. And everyone really just kind of chops it at first. But if you just isolate that last portion, now, the racket doesn't come from your back, by the way. It comes around to the side. But start with your arm bent and the edge of your racket up and just practice that last part of turning your forearm out to contact. So I'm going from the edge of the racket to what's called the wrist watch position if I had a wrist watch in. Just practice that. Um, you start busting myths. You'll see it's not really trying to do a wrist motion. It's really a whole arm action. 
straightening and turning your forearm. Just practice that to get used to that. Do that drill multiple times. And then once you've done that, I want you to go through your whole service motion, hopefully with your continental grip, stay in character and just kind of come in and tap the ball with the wrong side of your racket. You won't be able to do that unless your arm collapses and it comes around to at least here. But that's the feeling you want to have on your serve, is like you're going to hit it with the wrong side. So if you do that a few times, again, don't just sit there and do this. Go through your whole motion and then tap it with the wrong side. And then once you've had enough of that, you can kind of combine those two drills. I'm going to come around like I'm going to hit it with the wrong side, and then I'm going to go right side. Wrong side, right side. And then you'll have arm action like Ben Shelton. See you next time. Unrehearsed Ben Shelton serve, you ready? Let me get one ball in my hand because you know he does the hand thing. See if I can do this. That could have gone better. Let me try one more time. Exactly like Ben Shelton. Exactly.